I spent nearly every weekend and holiday with my family at my grandma's house. It is a tiny Ukrainian village where you can always hear birds singing and cocks are your best alarms. As you can see on the map, it is surrounded by forests on all sides. With my younger brother, we allowed just to come there and cycle down thin roads, trying to spot some animals or just to hang out alone. So this is a local forest. But this is the exact same forest from another angle of view. How these two photos surprised or shocked you? I believe they have not, as those kinds of spontaneous and hazardous rubbish accumulations are still just a common thing in Ukraine and many other countries all over the world. Our world generates more than 2 billion tons of waste annually, with at least 40% of that is not recycled and is poisoned in our environment. For instance, a regular plastic bottle, which we use nearly every day, during its decomposition releases many extremely toxic substances that, in addition to inflammation of muscles membranes, can cause cancer. It is predicted that by 2050, such waste is going to be hundreds of times more. It will contaminate our earth, our environment, ground, air, contaminate us. So what can we do? Huh, just a simple annoying question, of course, recycle. Although it is, hard, is, it is easy to answer, waste processing is extremely hard to implement. As modern technologies are either energy consuming or dangerous to the environment which makes them unaffordable to use in a lot of countries. Moreover, the most widespread mechanical processing requires very strict sorting on the first stage. Therefore, rubbish, for example, like in my forest and in many other forests, many other landfills, that has been laying there for a couple of years, for five years, for decades, just simply can't be sorted this way and isn't suitable for it. All of those facts were eye-opening to me. With my scientific supervisor, we have been working for two years on a project, the aim of which was to create a new efficient method for processing both organic and inorganic kinds of waste in the same chamber by improving one of already known methods. So my answer changed from what can we do, develop. What do we propose? We propose to use pyrolysis. It is the thermal destruction at temperatures between 5 and 600 degrees by Celsius, at which polymeric waste is converted to pyrolysis fuel and gas, and organic waste is converted to biofuel and biogas. The first advantage of it is that we can get fuel from useless waste. And the second advantage is that it doesn't require any strict certain at all. So we can process any kind of waste in the same chamber at a time. However, it should be noted that modern technology also has two disadvantages. The first one is that it is energy consuming due to the need of really high temperatures. And before I say about the second, it should be noted that at first in the camera we have rubbish and air. So we have oxygen also. And when we raise the temperature, at first a simple burning of the rubbish starts. It is calculated that approximately 20% of the rubbish simply burns, which makes the whole process completely dangerous to the environment due to the awful air pollution and decreases the overall effectiveness of the technology. So the second downside is the initial stage of burning, which precedes the pyrolysis. Our first solution. We propose to use solar energy as the main source of the reaction. We have made series of experiments with different kinds of concentrators and proved that we can use spherical collector to increase the needed temperature in the chamber. 
The spherical collectors you can see in the middle and in the left side of the picture. So, we are going to put the pyrolysis chamber right into the focus of the concentrator. The sun rays are going to reflect and hit the pyrolysis chamber directly. Therefore, our technology becomes energy independent and is going to work only by using solar energy. And what about the second downside? So, we should avoid burning. Therefore, we should make the absence of oxygen in the pyrolysis chamber, as fire exists only where the oxygen is present. We propose to add liquid nitrogen to the chamber. Liquid nitrogen expands in nearly 500 times and forces air and oxygen to come out. It takes place of them. So, before the reaction, we are going to have only rubbish and nitrogen inside of the chamber. Moreover, it was proved that at the temperatures and pressure of the pyrolysis, nitrogen is an inert gas. Therefore, it won't take part in the reaction process at all. And in addition, we not only make the pyrolysis completely safe to the environment by avoiding the stage of burning, but also we can get nearly 10% higher mass exodus of diesel fuel and gas at the end. So, by the data of experiments and our additional calculations, we have formed an effective scheme of the setting that works using our technology. We are going to have the pyrolysis chamber, which is put right into the focus of the spherical concentrator. And then, we are going to make the absence of oxygen by using liquid nitrogen, which is a cheaper and more effective alternative to the pressing, which is used nowadays. Because, again, pressing requires a lot of energy and also it leaves a small percentage of oxygen. Therefore, using the liquid nitrogen for dexagonation of the pyrolysis chamber is a significant improvement in the technologies existing nowadays. Although, as I said earlier, as our technology is energy independent, it is also transportable. It can be extremely useful for small trash accumulations in cities or forests, as we can use just one or two settings and transfer them from one small dump to another and gradually process waste at a time. It is also clear that our technology will be the most effective where there are a lot of unprocessed waste and where the solar activity will be the highest. For example, in the world, these are the regions of African countries, and in Ukraine, it's Ternopilska and Dniproska regions. So, with my scientific supervisor, we have created a new, efficient method for processing any kind of rubbish in the same chamber at a time, which is going to be both safe to the environment and economically efficient. As a world-famous Danish physicist, Niels Bohr said nearly 100 years ago, humanity will not perish in an atomic nightmare. It is going to suffocate in its own waste. And in order to save the planet, to avoid the sending, all of us should start to act right now.